The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 188. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of successful women finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Subscribe to our newsletter by visiting thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on who's all the way from San Diego. She is a technology entrepreneur, and she's here to share her story about self-confidence, so I'm really glad to have her on. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Erica Lee. Erica, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi, Sheena. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm really excited and grateful to be on your podcast. Quick background on me is I'm a 22-year-old technology entrepreneur from San Diego. I'm the founder and CEO of Asterix. It's an international automation company that specializes in digital marketing and web design for emerging tech businesses, as well as Zen.Vision, which is a virtual reality education application company. So in short summary, um, I'm the I'm a technology entrepreneur that loves enabling people to, you know, catalyze their performance and creativity through new technology. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Erica, what's your cultural background? My cultural background is I am Korean American. I'm I, my parents, Jonathan and Jessica, they're from South Korea, but I was actually born here in California, up in the Bay Area. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? One of my favorite quotes is by Steve Jobs. He's one of my inspirations behind business and entrepreneurship. And it's, have the courage to follow your heart intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. As well as um, if you're familiar with Star Wars, Yoda, which is like the leader of the Jedi Council, and I'm a big sci-fi fan. He has a quote. He tells all of his Jedis, which is, Quote, train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose. I love it. Those are great quotes. And especially, you know, growing up in an Asian culture, you know, we've been so prone to follow what we're supposed to do versus what we're meant to do. You know, and and sometimes when we follow what we're supposed to, we we fear all those things, right? We we can't seem to let it go because we feel like it's our only only choice when there's so many other ways to live life to the fullest, to live life on your own terms. I really love those quotes that you mentioned. And, you know, in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? Before I go into the quick definition, I actually have an engineering and like systems oriented background. So my definition of self-confidence actually has like four components, um, which kind of makes it complex. But I'll go into detail about what I think are the four cornerstones of self-confidence. For me, self-confidence, the first component is acceptance. This took me, I'd say, so I'm 22 now, and it took me about 21 years, about 20 or 21 years to figure this one out. So acceptance, which means, you know, for all of yourself within and outside, to be able to love yourself through losses and wins, good and bad, to be able to love the way you look when you look in the mirror, love the people that you're with, and to truly love all the things that you're grateful for in life and to have a strong sense of, you know, gratitude, even um, without having a strong sense of self-identity. I think for me, at least finding my self-identity came a little bit later in life, and um, it really started with a lot of like self-acceptance. The second component for me in self-confidence is vision. Even if you're not an entrepreneur, I think this applies is a good principle for people in general. So a vision for a better future and to be able to maintain and hold that vision even in you know dark and difficult times. And also even when it's not 100% defined, I think even having a starting point about a vision, which is you know a goal for the future or you know a better tomorrow, and kind of having the mindset that, you know, things can be changed and you can actually take part in that change. The third component, I'd say for self-confidence, is mindset. A mindset for a life of abundance. Um, being able to believe in yourself even when the rest of the world and friends or family might say no to you and you face a lot of rejection. And to be able to have that inner voice of, like, keep going. You went through a lot of uncertainty. And I was able to learn this from my mentor and previous boss, John Asaroff. He's the brain retraining expert featured in The Secret, if you're not familiar with that movie. And he's basically like the mindset expert on, um, I guess, brain transformations and being able to inspire people to take action of their lives. So I learned a lot about the power of mindset 
when I was working at John Ostroff's company. And then um, the fourth component about self-confidence, and this one I had to think about a little bit to see if it was actually related, but um, it's community. And for me, community is good for a strong safety net and a plethora of expertise, wisdom, and kindness. I didn't find out about the power of community till the past year when I decided to be an entrepreneur and pursue that goal. And for me, communities that I'm in really support my growth. They inspire me every single day. Even being able to log onto Facebook and see like all my news feeds of people's updates and questions for help and advice and just like really inspiring pictures just light me up and keep me going even when things are really difficult. But mostly the communities are so supportive of self-confidence because they allow you to give back. You can find mentors and also find mentees and be able to just provide back, you know, everything that you've achieved and just help other people in a really, really no obligation circle. Well, thanks for sharing those four components of your definition of self-confidence. I think all four components are very important when it comes to building your own self-confidence. And, you know, Erica, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Before, I'd say... I was severely depressed and anxious, and I was living in other people's expectations and values, what it should be, and, you know, whether I should be a college student or a doctor or work at a corporate company or, you know, just living in um, other people's, what they thought I should be, and that really resulted in a lot of negative emotions and actions that weren't serving me to my highest potential. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I think that's something we all go through, right? Especially as Asian women, you know, we've been programmed by society that we have to live a certain way, you know, and anything outside of that is not acceptable, which really hurts us in the end, because, you know, there's something inside us that wants to come out, even though, you know, maybe your parents, your family or society's telling us, no, that's not the way you're supposed to live, you're supposed to live this way. And your heart's telling you a different thing. So You know, what was that point in your life when you realized, you know, you didn't have to be anybody but yourself and you can go out there and live the life that you want? I have a few aha moments in the past two years. So I'll just do a short line on each. Um, I'd say the first biggest one was when I decided to leave college. I was studying engineering at Johns Hopkins and be able to leave college at 19 with your family, you know, really wanting to be in school and your peers expecting you to graduate Um, I left without actually knowing what to do, but I just knew I needed to go discover other things. And then also when I met my first boss and mentor, John Asaroff, I just knew there was a whole new lifestyle out there outside of, I guess, traditional conventional life. And then also when I, I guess the next biggest aha was when I actually left John's company a year later. I didn't actually know that I was going to be an entrepreneur and start my own, but I just knew that I could be able to create from a different space outside of someone's company. And um, I could be able to learn more. So i say those were my top aha moments over the past two years. That's great. And I'm glad, you know, you're able to, you know, realize these moments, especially at such a young age. There's so many other people out there who, you know, don't realize it till years later, which is not a bad thing. But, you know, everyone has their different journey. And I'm glad, you know, you're able to go out there and live your dreams while most 20 year olds are probably like partying every Saturday, right, or every weekend. And you know, because of these aha moments, what's your life been like now? I can only describe it probably in one word, which would be abundant and continuous growth. The quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson, I hang up on my bedroom wall and it says, once you make a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. And I became very clear on my desired outcomes and goals with my life. And that really just helped me hit all of them. Um, I think I became very, I, I, I definitely know I became extremely focused and um, I've just seen so many things manifest and it's been totally incredible. And I'm so grateful to have every single experience. Well, thanks for sharing that. And it's funny, you know, I saw the same quote today on my email and it was just like something I had to share with everyone because it's true, right? Once you have this decision that you just don't go back to, you're like, you're set on it. The universe does, you know, find ways to help you get to that that goal or get to that that outcome regardless what it looks like even if it doesn't look like how you want it to look i mean it, it will get there right there's, there's gonna be signs there's gonna be people who will come right in front of your face and just be like you know this is the way this is your purpose so you know i'm glad you shared that quote and you know erica to our listeners you know they may be um listening to your episode and they're in a similar you know journey to self-confidence what would be that one tip you would give to them 
say the top advice I would give to other women that are discovering or on their journey of self-confidence would be just to be yourself, you know, be able to love yourself inside and outside, and also to be able to prioritize yourself over others first. So, you know, respecting yourself, putting your time and valuing it. And what I realized is when I started serving myself first and realizing what was important to me, besides like helping everybody else and trying to make other people happy, the world actually ended up following the world actually ended up following um, what I wanted to do and helped support me to a point where now I'm able to support other people. And I'd also say life doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. I think that's like a pretty common mentality that, you know, you could be smart, but you can't be, you know, good with people or you can be rich, but you can't be happy. And like, there's all these like, ors. I think life is what you make of it. And that the more open minded you are to things, you can be able to include more versions of happiness. Thanks for sharing that. And I like that last part uh, that you mentioned, which is life doesn't have to be mutually ex- exclusive. Because, you know, I've always hated that saying, where someone tells you, like, you can't have your cake and eat it too, which to me doesn't make sense. Because what's the point of having cake if you can't eat it? <laughs> right? I always believe if you can imagine it, you can, you know, totally put it to fruition. Right? So love the tips that you mentioned. And Erica, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah. To be able to learn more about me, you can go to my website, which is www.astrictech.com. That's A-S-T-R-X-T-E-C-H.com. And to be able to learn more about Zen Vision, which is my virtual reality personal development program. And you can also enter to win a free virtual reality headset. You can go to Zen Vision slash Sheena, uh, which is actually exclusively just for your audience on Tao of Self-Confidence. And that's spelled Z-E-N dot V-I-S-I-O-N forward slash Sheena, S-H-E-E-N-A. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And listeners, make sure you check that out and, get, you know, try and win that free headset. And if you want to connect with Erica, you can also head on over to the Tao of Self-Confidence.com and search for Erica's name. Personal notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I really just want to thank Erica for taking the time to share her story and journey with us. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much, Gina, for hosting me on our podcast. And um, if your audience has any questions, they can reach me at hello at asterisktech.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at A-S-T-R-X-T-E-C-H dot com. And I'd be happy to give them any advice or check out what they're doing. Thanks so much. Awesome. It was an honor to have you on. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of another amazing woman's journey to self-confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Check out our resources to help you jumpstart your inner journey to self-confidence by visiting the Tao of Self-Confidence.com.